everyone. Today we're going to talk about concept mapping. I'm Debbie Pixton. What is concept mapping? Concept mapping is the process of creating a detailed visualization of all the elements of a larger concept, phrase, or term. In terms of the design cycle, concept mapping is part of the define phase. So why use a concept map? Well, it allows you to name or define all of the elements of a particular subject, topic, experience, person, or other concept. It allows you to visualize the relationships between the elements of a larger concept, and it can create a collective display of knowledge, especially when working with a diverse group of participants. A concept map can take many forms. This version on combustion has fewer parts and is displayed as a horizontal hierarchical chart, while this concept map on U.S. history has lots of details and branches out in many directions. This version brings in lots of graphic design as it displays the flow of how a bill becomes a law. There are hundreds of applications for concept maps. It's a powerful tool for organizing and visualizing nearly any collection of information. It's an alternative to traditional note-taking or outlining, and it demonstrates the collective understanding of a complex topic or idea. So how exactly do you construct a concept map? Well, in step one, on your own, silently, write down all of the ideas, terms, experiences, etc. that come to mind when you think of your chosen term or concept. For our purposes, we'll use the prompt, what is design thinking? In step two, you'll post and share all of your sticky notes together and eliminate any duplicates. You can see our refined set of sticky notes here. In step three, begin to organize the many ideas that you posted. How you choose to organize is up to you. Hierarchy, flowchart, web, anything is fine. Here's one way we could organize our stickies around what is design thinking. In step four, look for sticky notes that might connect to or support one another. Remember, there's no one right way to organize the information. If I'm mapping design thinking, it might look like this example, or example two, or here's a third example of how I might map design thinking. In step five, you draw lines to connect concepts together. Label those connections, usually with a verb or a linking phrase. In our example on design thinking, some of the brainstormed ideas become the links. This doesn't happen every time. But you can see in example one, we have more of a web, whereas in example two, we have more of a linear progression. In general, concept mapping leads to better understanding how individuals define a term or concept, and by working together, it can help expand meaning and perspective of the group. Often we ask folks to organize their stickies, and then we ask, so what does this all mean? And no one can actually verbalize it. It does not matter so much how a group chooses to organize their ideas, but it is important to push them to be able to communicate their thinking. You may be wondering if concept mapping is best done in person or virtually, and really it can be done either way. If you are in person, you'll want to make sure that you have sticky notes, markers, and either a whiteboard, poster paper, or large sheets of paper to organize your stickies on. It's also best if you work at tables or in groups of desks pushed together. Here is an example of an in-person concept map. An administrative team from a school was discussing school culture. Here we have two in-person concept maps that were created in response to the prompt, what are the elements of impactful school business community partnerships? If you're creating your concept map virtually, you might consider Jamboard or Padlet. You still identify your ideas with virtual sticky notes, and then you move the ideas around and use text boxes or other colored sticky notes to label the ideas and relationships. Here are a few tips and tricks. Do you make sure you are clear on what you are mapping before you begin? Have a word or a question to guide your initial brainstorm session. 
Do allow the ideas to come first, then add the structure and relationships. Don't impose a structure on an idea before you have all of the associations on the table. Do use colors or shapes to help visually organize the flow of information to make it easier to understand. And do describe relationships with words in addition to arrows. Include arrows in both directions if it's appropriate. To review. Remember, concept mapping is intended to help define and deepen understanding of a concept by exploring the relationship between its many component parts. It's especially valuable when exploring a concept that has many underlying parts or may have a variety of meanings to different people. Finally, how a map is organized is up to you and your participants. Concept maps can take many different forms. Thank you. 